realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Rodman. This is Gary Hines of the Grammy Award-winning Sounds of Blackness, sending a big shout-out to Queen Kimmy and Elation Radio. We'll be there September 7th at noon Central Standard Time, talking about all of Sounds of Blackness' current and upcoming projects, including our single with the great Ann Nesby that's released right now called We Rise, our single with the great We Willie Walker, It's about racism, and it's called Ain't Gonna Whistle Dixie No More. We have a single with the great Grammy Award-winning jazz guitarist, Norman Brown, Man in the Mirror, featuring Sounds of Blackness. And we've got an upcoming release with Trinity Church out of Chicago, Unashamedly Black, will be the new anthem. Sounds of Blackness will also be releasing a single called Humanity and performing the 40th anniversary of our unique one and only The Night Before Christmas. Get in touch with us at soundsofblackness.org, our website, or Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn. But we'll look for you September 7th, noon central time, with the one and only Queen Kimmy on Elation Radio.
Good evening, friends and family that has joined us on the Lacing Radio Magazine. This is truly the day that the Lord has made, and I'm grateful to be one in the number one more time, as my grandmother used to say. I don't know about the, those of you that are listening, but I am grateful to God to be alive. It is a blessing to be in the land of the living. And God has decided to allow us another opportunity, another chance to lift up his name and to live the life that the Bible prescribes is truly a blessing. Um, I am, again, elated and grateful for another opportunity to be on the air with the Elation Magazine Radio the Nation Radio is a blessing and an honor and a privilege from God to share God's great gospel with his people. Um, sometimes I think we can get to the point where we are or we feel that it's uh, it's God's duty. It's his, he's mandated to uh, do this and do that, and we're supposed to be uh, doing uh, whatever we are to be doing what God has called us to do, but I'm grateful to God that he's allowed us to do it because he, as uh, they used to sing an old song when I was growing up as a little boy, he didn't have to do it, but he did, and I'm grateful that he did. Um, let's pray before we get into to tonight's word. Father, we thank you for blessing us with another opportunity to spread your great gospel. We thank you for blessing us with life, health, and strength. You are the great I am. You're El Shaddai. You're the God that's more than enough. And I thank you right now for the privilege and the honor to share your great gospel. Millions can, didn't make it, but God, I'm glad that I'm one that did. And I'm grateful to you for just giving me this opportunity. So use me, move, help me to move myself aside that your spirit is manifested and you have your own way. Anoint our hearts to hear your holy word that we might receive and live by your command. It's in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, God. Amen. How's our influence? First titled this, How's Your Influence? But one thing that I've learned from reading this Bible, it's not for me to just preach at or to other people, but it's also even for me. Um, we as ministers of God's great gospel can never forget that we're not preaching to people, but we, we're preaching to all of us, uh, ourselves included. Um, matter, as a matter of fact, before I can teach it or preach it to anyone else, I need to make sure that I am uh, in line with God's word because we all need his word. And the only way we're going to be successful in this life is we uh, read his word, study his word, and then obey what we've read and study and got an understanding of. So tonight, the message is how our influence, how's our influence. First Kings, the fourth chapter, the 34th verse reads in the King James Version, And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. This text picks up talking about how all people came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now, to give you a little background of King Solomon, King Solomon was the king of Israel and Judah, and he was the son of the great King David. Solomon is known as the richest and wisest king uh, that there ever was. Solomon had it going on in today's standards. He was the man. He was the one uh, that everybody wanted to in, to uh, be like. Or everybody uh, seen the things that was in Solomon's life and 
wanted to take part or, or have a part of uh, what Solomon life was like. And I think by looking at the life of Solomon, we can learn a lot of things. Solomon was the richest, wisest king. But Solomon knew where his wisdom and his riches came from. Now, before I go any further and how's our influence, I want to deal with, we got to understand and we must know who our source is. Our source is God. Our financial source, our uh, physical source, our spiritual source, of course, uh, whatever we need or desire, it's, it's got to come from God. If it's going to be done, it's going to be because of God. If we need healing in our body, it's going to be done. From God, he, he might use a doctor. He might use medicine. He might just use um, his servant to lay hands or a prayer to be prayed. But how be ever is still going to come from God. Um, that we he might use a job, you know, uh, to channel our income to help us uh, make a living. But it's our our finances are still coming from God. He is our ultimate source. Uh, I'm reminded of a song that Evelyn Tarantino G sung, and it said, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. In that song, they were acknowledging that everything that's good and perfect comes from our Father, as James says in his book. But tonight, how is is our influence? How's our influence? A lot of people heard of the influence that Solomon, or the wisdom that Solomon had. Solomon, as I before stated, was the richest, wisest king. So when you are that powerful, you attract a lot of people. That's why it behooves us because of our Christianity and the spirit that dwells in us, it attracts others. Sometimes it attracts, we're, we're doing good, but it might attract the wrong People because everybody that wants to link up with you is not wanting to link up with you because of the God in you. Sometimes people want to link up with you because of what they can get from you or what they can try to be to you. And that's why it's important that we pray and ask God before any move we make, should I be associated with this person? Um, Is this the route that you would have me to take? Should I link up with this person? Proverbs 3 Five uh, says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. So just because you are a person of influence and you have influence, it behooves us to ask God, who are we to reach? Where do you want us to be? For how long do you want us to be? Just just lead in God as it's just Important to let God lead you. My dad used to sing a song when I was a little boy that made so much sense. It said, let Jesus lead you. And and he's, as they said in the song also, he's a mighty good leader. And he'll lead us all the way. So it's just important to let God lead us. So all these people, they came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon's wisdom came from God because he asked for wisdom. And it also tells us in this from the story of Solomon, that if we can, if we ask God, he will do it. We just have to have faith. We have to believe. It may not happen today. It may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen next week. It may be years down the line. But if we ask God and we have the faith, as Mark eleven twenty four tells us, whatsoever we desire, if we believe that we receive them when we pray, we shall have it. So it behooves us to do like Solomon did. He asked God for wisdom. And God gave him wisdom, and he gave him so much more because he wasn't seeking money. He wasn't seeking fame. He wasn't seeking uh, being a ladies' man. He wasn't seeking those things, but he wanted the wisdom of God. That's what Scripture tells us in Matthew six thirty three. but seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Solomon is a prime example. The first thing he saw, he wanted wisdom from God. Fame is great. Notoriety is great. Being well-known and loved by people is a great thing. But the greatest thing is that we can have is, is is to follow Christ and his love on our lives and to do his will. That's our first and foremost, should be our first and foremost um, aim in life. God, what would you have me to do? And follow out his plan. 
So there came people to hear the wisdom of Solomon that came from God, from all, even the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. They even sought after this man that has the wisdom of God. And it tells us that if we seek the things of God, people that we wouldn't even expect will seek after the God in us. They're not seeking after us. That's why we can't get it twisted and think because God blessed us with abilities um, that it's about us. No, it was God that gave us that ability, and he gave us that ability to be a blessing to someone else. He didn't bless me and call me to preach and teach his great gospel just for me to go around and preach and teach and feel good about people saying, oh, he can preach, he can do it, and he's talented. You know? that, that, that is, is good in its place. But he didn't call me for that. He called me to tell people about him. The late Bishop Nate Holcomb used to say all the time, it's all about him. And that's what we got to realize in this walk of life, when we're serving God to what God has called us to do, it's all about him. It's not about my name being in the lights. It's not about my name being plasterized everywhere. It's not about everybody knowing who I am, but do you know who Jesus is? Because when I can't be there, Jesus will be there. I can't heal your body, but Jesus can. I can't, um, I could be um, used as a channel of blessings, but I can't be the originator of the blessing. I'm not the source of blessings. God is the source of blessing. God is the source of healing. God is the source of deliverance. God is the source of uh, giving us joy unspeakable and full of glory. So we must realize, like Solomon, our wisdom and everything that we need or whatever we may need, it all comes from God. He's our source. And if we want to have that influence, we need to have, ask God for what he would have us to do and how we need to do it. And that will attract people. That is our whole purpose in this walk of life is to gain men and women to serve our great God. It's not about us being in the, on the stage and in the limelight, but it's about God. I have made up in my mind that whatever I'm going to do, it's got to be promoting my Jesus. It's got to be letting the world know about a man, as the the uh, Williams brother song of song said, that I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And I know if he could save me, a man that was doing every and anything that I that came to my mind to do. And he can save and change me and make me into the person that he is molding and making me into, then he can change you. There's no drug that's strong enough. There's no sin that you may be involved in that God can't deliver and make you into what he would have you to be and use you for his glory and for his honor. Back to what I was stating earlier about Solomon. Solomon had all this wisdom, and his wisdom attracted even his fellow kings. They came from miles around to sit and listen at his wisdom, and that is what we should be like. Our Whatever our niche or whatever God has called us to do, it should be so attractive to folks that people want to gravitate to us. You know, our coworkers should not want to shun us but they ought to want to listen to us and be around us because of the goodness and the greatness of God that's flowing through us. Um, our family should love us and want to be around us, not we push them away um, because of we may be speaking one thing, but we're doing another. Our influence should be so powerful that we reach our homes first because uh, it starts at home. And once we uh, reach our homes, or, or simultaneously, we ought to be reaching our word around us on our jobs, um, even people in our church that may not have come uh, to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Um, uh, at the gym or, or whatever you may be involved in, wherever you spend a lot of time at, we should be so powerful uh, and should have such a powerful influence that people want to be around us. People ought to come from all around just to hear us talk about our Jesus. It wasn't just for Solomon, but it's for all of us. All of us can be wise enough to win souls. The Bible says he 
who win his souls is wise. And I don't know about you, but I want to be wise to win souls. I want my brothers and sisters to come to know Jesus Christ as I know him, and, and, and maybe even better. I want the world to know that there is a God in heaven that cares about them. He says, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. And because he cares for them, they can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask what they will, and God will give them the help they need in the time of trouble. That's what we ought to be influencing our world with today. The world needs more Jesus. Our influence must be about Jesus. Our world needs him. And I'm grateful that I am a conduit of his um, word and of his blessing. I'm grateful to God that he called me one night in 2003 to preach this great gospel and he could have chosen anybody in which he has uh, mandated all of us to tell of his goodness. But I'm thankful to God that he's called us out of the darkness into the marvelous light to tell the world about his son, Jesus, down on the cross for all of our sins. And we must let the world know who this Jesus is. And not only in the way we talk, but the way we live, our influence should be so powerful, people see how we carry ourselves. They see we don't engage in any and every conversation, especially those that are not uh, beneficial to the kingdom of God, that are not uh, going to be edifying to the hearer. But uh, he, we, the world ought to see how we carry ourselves, how we uh, manage our money, how we manage our time, how we raise our children, what kind of spouse we are, uh, what kind of uh, Christian church member we are. The world needs to see our influence, and, and it should be in such a positive way, godly way, that they not only see our influence, but they turn their life to try to be what they see in us. We ought to have so much influence that the world looks at us and say, I want to be like them. As uh, An old song that was sung at my old church as a little boy, they used to say, I want to be just like him. I want to be just like him. And people of God, we are Jesus is on the earth, so to speak. We are his uh, disciples. And uh, the, the world, especially those that are lost, ought to be able to see the Jesus in us. And because they see the Jesus in us, they, they ought to be inquisitive. They ought to have some curiosity. And they want to uh, connect with us. And, and get to know this Jesus. And we ought to be able to lead them to Jesus by his word in Romans 10 and 9. And, 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 and by leading them to Jesus, then they begin to grow after they, they're, they're learning and they're studying his word and becoming what they ought to be. And, and that's how we've got to make disciples because that's what this world needs, more disciples of Jesus. We've got a lot of people following a lot of different things. But the main thing that we ought to be following, the main thing that we ought to be a part of, is focusing and serving our Jesus. The world needs the Jesus in us. As the scripture says, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify God. Not say that I did so well. Not say, oh, he's just good. No, I'm not good. Paul said it like this, no good thing dwelleth in me in this flesh. The good that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the evil that I said I wasn't going to do, I find myself doing because there's a war in my body, my flesh against my spirit. But if you see me doing good, you know that God is working in me. And that's what we ought to be doing in this world. The world ought to see the God working in us. Reminded of another old song that says, something on the inside, which I know what that something is. That something is Jesus. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. We know how we used to be. And if we're still that way, we know how we are. But we know that there can be a change from the spirit of the living God that can make us into great people of God that can have influence. So tonight, how's your influence? Are you winning the loss or are you shunning people away from God's grace and God's mercy that they can take advantage of? Are they seeing you and they don't want to serve the God that you serve? Or are they seeing you and saying there's something peculiar about them? I, I want to know more about them. Uh, what is uh, this about this God that you serve that causes you to love your enemies and 
pray for them that despitefully use you, that uh, helps you to give to those that are in need, give of your service, give of your time, give of your money. What, what is it that makes you so different? It's the God. That's what we ought to be. His love, his love, Jesus, his love never leave me nor forsake me. His love, when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got his love. Family stop calling, friends tripping, I got his love. Mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love. Never leave me, nor forsake me. His love, when haters try to hate or try to break me, I got his love. Family stop calling, friends tripping, I got his love. Mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love. Okay, I rise, his glory on my mind, I hustle over time. Checking reservation, Come destination on, on my mind. mind. Looking in the mirror, yes, his image fit me fine. Love. You eat in moderation, I, I prefer the buffet yeah, line. Yeah. Attracted to his light, yes, I'm bugging, hope he's smiling. Have my life been blinded, right. he fly, I co pilot. Yeah. Can't wait to see my wings, arms extended like I'm flying. I'm his where we co sign it. Yeah, right. Everything my father did not worthy, but I thank him for his grace. Yeah, he hold right. me like a brace, I'm on forever, fake sharp. Accelerate the haters say we breaking ground right here. Watch me demonstrate his love is not a fling, a command you should incorporate. Never leave me, nor forsake me. His love when haters try to hate or try to break me. I got his love. Family stop calling, friends tripping. I got his love. Mad cause I changed, now I'm living. I got his love. Never leave me, nor forsake me. His love when haters try to hate or try to break me. I got his love. Family stop I'm calling friends tripping, I got his love Mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love hey, Go ahead, keep hating on me, I got his blood all on me Jesus the one and only, with him I'm never lonely We beating all opponents, you foolish if you want it My life, my father own it, to me he only loaned it I got his love all in my life, I never have to fight I see it in my fam, I see it in my wife I feel it in my toes, I feel it in my eyes, I feel it in my lows, this beat is froze God squad, bro, you know I flow so cold uh-huh. There it go, Holy Spirit All around like Mary go Am I blessed? Look you in the face And I say very bro, oh, yeah I know Scripture's on deck and I'ma Let him go, got his love Psalms chapter 54 and verse 4, whoa, never leave me Nor forsake me, his love When haters try to hate or try To break me, I got his love Family stop calling, friends tripping I got his love, man Cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love Never leave me, nor forsake me His love, when haters try to hate or try to break me I got his love, family stop calling, friends tripping I got his love, mad cause I changed, now I'm living, I got his love He brought me from the streets, south side of the project it was Surrounded by the killers and the hustlers on that dope set I, was right there. I almost right there. lost it, when I ain't make it playing pro ball For But real. God picked me up, yeah he said me from my slow fall, yes, my mind was suicidal when I looked at my bank flow. <laughs> Child support snatched it, it was blanket red zero. Was I started thinking, jumping in the Mississippi. Yeah. God helped me closest when this love finally hit me. Fast yeah. forward to the summer of one three. Yeah. That's yeah. when I got serious and this word had me hungry. Yeah. I switched yeah. to a warrior similar to KD. Right. His I'm love right. made his song cry similar to Jay Z. Never love. leave me, nor forsake me His love, when haters try to hate or try to break me I got his love, family stop calling, friends tripping I got his love, mad cause I changed, now I'm living I got his love, never leave me, nor forsake me His love, when haters try to hate or try to break me I got his love, family stop calling, friends tripping I got his love, mad cause I changed, now I'm living I got his love